Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Tuesday, December the 1st. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, the Lord comes to save us. O come, let us worship him. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands is the evening sacrifice. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. The New Testament reading today is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives, when they see your respectful and pure conduct. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you are her children, if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless, for to this you are called, that you may obtain a blessing. For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good, let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers, having been subjected to him. First reading with Luther tonight is based on Genesis 26, 7. Isaac answered, she's my sister. He was afraid to say my wife. He thought that the men of the place would kill him to get Rebekah because she was an attractive woman. 
God uses weak people. The theologians argue about whether Isaac was sinning when he lied and said that Rebekah was his sister. In his weakness, he thought, I'll say she's my sister or else they might kill me. That almost sounds like, go ahead, take my wife and disgrace her as long as I don't get hurt. If I say she's my wife, you'll only feel like you can't have her unless you kill me first. Isn't that a foolish, silly, and unworthy attitude for such an important man? Shouldn't he just have said, she's my wife, I don't care whether you kill me or not? But the passage says that Isaac was afraid. What a shame that someone as important as he would, should be so afraid of death. This story was written to comfort God's people. It shows how merciful and kind God really is. Even though we are sinful and weak, the Lord will be patient with our weaknesses, as long as we stay away from those who deny, hate, or curse God. I don't want to excuse our ancestors in the faith, as some people do. It's comforting to hear that even good people in the Bible slipped and did wrong. I don't hold up their actions as if they were good. Similarly, I don't excuse Peter for denying Jesus. I don't excuse the apostles for deserting Jesus or for any other foolish thing they did. Among his little flock, there are some poor, miserable, and weak souls. Jesus is the king of the weak as well as the strong. He hates arrogant people and opposes the stubborn. He punishes hypocrites and people who are overconfident. But he doesn't want to discourage or crush those who are scared, sad, or worried. He doesn't want to extinguish the flickering light. Isaiah 42.3 we join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us through their example, and the example of so many holy martyrs, to be ever watchful of the confession of your son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace, that we may withstand all trials, and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our short Luther reading tonight is from Romans 13, 12. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. The light of the world. The doctrine of the law, or the first light, is the moon. It teaches our obligation to bear fruits as a good tree should. The other light is the sun. It speaks of the new man of a different tree, telling us what, that we receive the gospel from Christ. There we hear whence and how a man becomes good, namely through faith. Thus the gospel deals not with our works, but with grace and gifts, with the good that God does for us and presents to us through Christ. 
The Ten Commandments tell us about our duties toward God. Now, to be sure, the moon shines at night, but still it does not turn night into day. Christ, however, is the true Son. He ushers in the morning and the day. He teaches us how to be saved and how to be delivered from death and sin. Therefore, he says, I am the light which illumines the whole world. For he alone liberates from sin, death, and the devil, and hell. Now again, the proclamation is issued that sin is condemned solely in Christ, and that we are delivered from sin without our works, boasts, or deeds, but only through the death of Christ. This is the message of the gospel. This is the light and true brilliance of the sun, which radiates through the entire world. So Christ's claim is just. The doctrine in itself is true. He is the light of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.